Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports, and today we're taking a look at the brand new Adidas Supernova Solution. We're also going to compare it to the Supernova Rise, because I think there's some key similarities. Let's run with it. Now, before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. These shoes have somewhat similar stats. They both cost $140, had the same stack height of 36 millimeters in the heel, 26 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop, which is on the higher end of things when it comes to heel to toe drop. So just keep that in mind. The solution does weigh a bit more coming in at 10.3 ounces, which makes sense because it's a stability running shoe, while the Rise comes in at 9.9 .9 ounces, pretty average for a shoe in this category. I was expecting them to be lighter just because they have the Piba foam in the midsole, which I'll touch on later, but for the most part, not too heavy, not too light, just kind of right in the middle. The uppers are nearly identical between the Rise and the Solution. The only difference I could find is on the Solution, we have one additional plastic or synthetic overlay that goes across the medial side of the upper, which does not exist on the Rise. Now I'm assuming this is potentially because this is a stability shoe and they want to give you some more support, or I think this could potentially just be a design change. Either way, I really couldn't notice it, but when examining the uppers, that was the only difference I happened to notice. Otherwise, the upper itself is a rather traditional engineered mesh. Breathability was fine. It fits true to size. The toe box is a little bit pointed, um, so if you do like a wider toe box, you might want to go in a different direction, but otherwise, I was quite happy with it. If you move towards the back, the heel counter is extremely well padded and extremely stiff as well, which helps with the overall lockdown. It was pretty solid here, no major complaints with regard to that. But the one issue I do have is with the tongue. The tongue is incredibly well padded, like the back of the shoe. However, it's not gusseted, and usually that's not a huge problem for me, but in this case, the edges of the tongue were kind of rough and they bunched up a bit, and even when I try to get them to lay flat, they would sometimes come back, sometimes it wouldn't, to create irritation, and I just wish they would just make it a more seamless, consistent experience, or just gusseted it all together. I think that would fix the issue. It is something that kept on popping up and kind of hindered my experience uh, every now and then, which probably shouldn't happen on a $140 shoe, but otherwise, with regard to the upper, I was quite happy with it. Lockdown, solid, and again, breathability, pretty awesome as well. Moving on to the midsole, these are also very similar to each other. They have a full length Dream Strike Plus foam, which is a new material for Adidas. It's a Piba based foam, which is one of the top tier uh, compounds for running shoes nowadays. It's a little bit more exciting, has a little more bounce and pop to it. So when people heard that Adidas was putting Piva in a kind of more traditional daily trainer, uh, they got really excited. And while I don't think it's the most exciting Piva experience ever, I think it does a solid job at giving you a nice level of cushioning and pop, especially towards the back part of the shoe. But what separates the rise and the solution? Well, you have to look towards the bottom because we have some gray EVA foam rods. The large gray foam rods pretty much extend the full length of the shoe. They're denser and firmer, offering support to the softer Piba foam, which sits on top. Now, these rods exist on the rise. However, they are much more substantial on the solution, especially towards the back part. They come up higher on the lateral and medial side, giving guidance because, again, this is the stability version of the rise. So essentially, you're going to get a little bit more rigidity through the back half of the shoe, a little bit more support because of these dense gray foam rods, which stabilize that Piba foam even more compared to what we see on the neutral counterpart. Now, I will say, again, after trying the solution, this is more of a light stability shoe. It's not the most supportive uh, stability option I have tried. It honestly almost kind of feels like a neutral shoe with some additional rigidity towards, towards the back half. So if you're someone who needs a lot of guidance, I might go in a different direction, uh, but otherwise they do feel slightly different with the solution just having more rigidity and support towards the back portion. However, even with these support rods, I will say both the Solution and the Rise are fairly flexible and easy to bend. So for someone who's looking for a stability shoe that isn't overly restrictive and fairly flexible, I think this is a good way to go. But if you're someone who needs a lot of guidance, I might look in a different direction. After trying both of these shoes, the Dream Strike Plus Piba Base Foam is a noticeable improvement compared to more conventional EVA foam midsoles. Although I will say this version a Pipa probably isn't my favorite or isn't the most expressive uh, Pipa based midsole I've ever tried. I think it works quite well. You notice most of the cushioning and bounce towards the back and midfoot. The forefoot fell just a bit flat to me. 
Otherwise, I think it does a nice job of giving you some cushioning. And if you're someone who likes the rise but needs a little bit of guidance or someone who just needs just a tiny bit of support, I think that's where the solution comes in. They're fairly close to each other. I don't think there's a massive gap between the two. You can tell there's a difference, but I don't think these are miles apart just because the only real difference is you have um, just a tad bit more of that gray support foam towards the rear. Otherwise, the midsoles, upper, everything else is nearly the same. Moving on to the outsoles, plenty of rubber coverage. They're nearly identical. It's not continental tire rubber, which I'm quite interested to see. It's AddiWare outsole rubber. Uh, I thought the traction was fine, and there is tons of rubber here, which I think should help the overall longevity. I know Adidas has a ton of different running shoes, but I do think these stand out in the workhorse daily training category for Adidas. My only major complaint was the edges of the tongue were a little bit uncomfortable, and I do hope they gusted it or find a way to make it a more seamless, consistent experience. But other than that, I'm quite happy with Dream Strike Plus. I hope to see even more Dream Strike Plus in the future. I think it'd be cool to see like an Ultramax cushion version of the Supernova Rise or maybe even the Supernova Solution, a stability Ultramax cushion shoe. Um, so I think Adidas is headed in the right direction with these new compounds. They just need to fix the tongue first. Well, that concludes the review. Let me know in the comments what you think of these two shoes and what do you think of Dream Strike Plus. I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.